doing the right product research on your Etsy shop and help you identify what products are in demand right now and what products you need to create. Again, Etsy is a search-based platform. That means people are typing in what they want to buy. However, if you don't know what people are typing in, you're probably going to create products that people are not going to purchase. However, in today's video, I'm going to share with you an easy way for you to identify how many people are searching up a product per month and what are the best products you need to create for your Etsy shop. I'm gonna show you all this coming up next. So welcome back to the video, my friends. You're new here, my name is Jay. And on this channel, I teach you how to make passive income online by creating and selling your own products. And so if you like content like this, then consider subscribing to my channel. Now today, we're gonna to take a look at Sell Samurai. They have a wonderful research tool to help you identify what products you need to create on your Etsy shop. We're gonna do a deep dive in their Google extension tool as to show you literally the number of searches per month that are being done on the Etsy marketplace. And this will help you identify what type of products you need to focus on and actually create on your Etsy shop. Now, if you want to check out Sell Samurai on your own, they were so kind to give my audience a discount code for you to use all of their pro features. However, if you want to test this out for yourself, you could actually register for free and use some of the tools we talk about in today's video. I make sure I leave all the links to Sell Samurai in my description box below. All right, so we're going to jump into Etsy and we're going to focus on the Google Extension tool with Sell Samurai in regards to Etsy. And so this is great to do product research if you're trying to figure out what type of things are actually driving people to the Etsy marketplace and what is the level of competition in regarding that product. So I'm going to share with you exactly how to do that right now with the search bar with Etsy. So one of the first things I often do is I search up a broad category keyword. In our case today, I'm going to search up real estate just as a broad keyword now as you already see etsy is auto populating the search phrases to let me know what things the people are typing in they'll summarize google extension tool is giving me the extra data to let me know how many people are searching up this particular category or this particular search phrase every single month now this is great because not only is Etsy giving me the words right here on the search bar but i'm receiving that data from sales summarize to really know what type of products i need to focus on and create in my shop so i see that real estate is doing well right now has over 3,000 search results per month and I know real estate marketing has over a thousand searches per month and if you see this little trend here with the Etsy search bar the search phrases that are at the top of the bar here has the most traffic volume and those that are at the bottom has the least amount of search traffic per month so again this is a great indication for you to figure out what type of products you need to create now from here the goal is just not to focus on the search volume but to make sure that the search volume is paired properly with the level of competition if I just search on the basic main category keyword real estate I would then see the level of competition, almost a hundred thousand listings coming up just for this basic search term real estate. Now that doesn't mean that this is a poor place for you to actually create products in. The goal here is to start very broad, but then find those micro niches. You can start creating products in. Now, if I am creating a digital product, I will go in here a little bit further and say, okay, what type of digital products I can create. And again, I see there are some digital products that are coming up in the search results. For instance, real estate marketing, real estate template, real estate postcards. Now, again, the goal here is to match up the search volume properly with the level of competition. I can go in here and search up real estate template. And again, I had 91,000 listings just for the for the basic search category where real estate, and now that dropped to 50,000. Again, not the best here, but again, the goal here is to have this be, be filtered through the main category keyword and try to find those micro niches with the real estate template. Now, the Google extension tool from Sales Samurai give us a little bit more for us to focus on in regards to how can I see the level of search volume and the amount of competition that's coming up per list. Now, if I go back to my basic category keyword with real estate template, you can see this little option here. I have this option to click to see 500 more relatable search phrases that's tied to my main category keyword real estate. Now, what it will do then, it will take me to this other window where I'm able to see at a glance all 500 search phrases along with the other level of competition for those search phrases in regards to this product. So as you can see here, I have all of my search phrases and keywords on this side here. I see the level of search volume 
Also, the level of competition and the words, if it's two or three words, letting me know, yes, it is a long tail keyword. Now, the reason why this window here is so important is because I'm able to do product research at a major glance to identify, okay, what is the level of demand and how is that demand compared with the level of competition? And I automatically see the CMA real estate. I can go in here and click this. It will bring this up into Etsy and it will let me see what type of products are created in this way. Again, the goal here is to properly pair the search volume to the level of competition and the goal here is to always keep the search volume high as high as possible but you definitely want to try and bring down that competition to be low because the less people you have to compete with the more frequently you are able to show up in the search results higher on the first page and so i would go here and actually see okay what things are coming up i see real estate email is coming up or email real estate is coming up and the competition is only about 3000 search results. I can click on this and it will bring me into the Etsy page where I'm able to see the products that are coming up for this search result. Now from here, I have already confirmed that there is a demand for email real estate because we went back here and realized that this is actually searched up about a thousand times every single month. But then if I go back to my page here, I also know that the competition is extremely low, only about 3000 plus search results. So I would go down here and start pulling out some things that are, are doing well. I would start identifying some products that are, are doing well, some content, some layouts of emails that are doing well. And I will extract from things that are doing well right now and start delivering something new in this marketplace that is already showing demand. So I would go here and open up several best selling items and start pulling from each and every one of those items to see what things are doing well, what number of emails newsletters are, are doing well what type of bundle style what type of you know graphic design layout for the email are doing well and again this is where i'm able to show up in a demanding space that has less competition in regards to the product again the goal here is for you to match the search volume with the level of competition and to make sure that those things are even out fairly well and what i mean by that is that you know there's a level of competition there but it's not things above ten thousand, right if i got 500 uh, search results per per a product or for the search phrase i don't want to go above ten thousand, right because i want to make sure that the competition is as low as possible and again it will vary for the search volume that you have if you have a search volume that has twenty six thousand listings per month and then you have 30,000 competitive listings that's coming up per month. That's a decent ratio between the search volume and level of competition because there is an extreme amount of demand for that particular product and in which I'll show you a case of that today. So again, this is how I would do my research phase for my products. So the sales summary Google decision tool also allows you to filter the search results that are coming up in regards to, to my main category keyword here, I have real estate. And so from the search results in regards to the filter, the from is the bottom level, right? I don't want anything to go uh, lower than 100 searches per month. So I'm going to hit 100 here. But in regards to the competition, the two is the top. So I don't want anything to peak over whatever number I put in for the two. So in my number today, I want to put 10,000. I think that is a reasonable number to have for our ceiling to make sure that we're not going above that particular number. So just go over this again. The search volume is going to show me things that has nothing lower than a hundred searches per month. And the level of competition is not going to peak over 10,000 searches per month or 10,000 listings for that search result. So when I hit filter what it would do is that it would filter all of these 500 listings that i have here and only show me the listings that's tied to what i actually have here so from here i have 39 different product keywords i can focus on in regards to what type of products i create for my store and again everything that's showing on this filter is nothing lower than 100 searches and then nothing picking over 10,000 level of competition for the search result so again i still see the cma real estate i see the email real estate template as we did before i see real estate market again it has a thousand searches per month and about 4,000 level of competition i can go here and click and see okay what type of things are coming up and what things are doing well i say recruiting uh, real estate i can go in here a little bit further it has about 400 plus search results per month and again less than 2,000 search results and so i can click on this and see again what things are doing well in regards to this product also i see real estate post has about 4,000 plus search results per month and a little bit less than 10,000. So again, this is the 
product research I would do on that basic level to see what type of things I need to create. I will go in here and open this up into the SQL search bar as we did before and see what type of products are coming up and focus on those best selling items and then create something new to bring into this demanding marketplace. So as a side note, this not only can be useful for you to identify products you need to sell, but it can also be useful for you to actually focus on what type of keywords are bringing in traffic as well. I will up my competition level in regards to the traffic volume because I know that the traffic traffic volume is going to help me bring more items to my product if I'm using multiple keywords in my tag. So I want to filter this in regards to my traffic volume I'm trying to pull over to my product when I do my Etsy title and my Etsy tags. But when it comes down to creating a specific product for a specific audience, I definitely want to make sure that the level of competition is low. And how can I start utilizing these phrases for my tags as well as my title in regards to my product that I am listing on Etsy? Now, another great place to sell if you are in the digital space is resume templates or just in the resume space itself. And this is the example I'm talking about here where that the search volume is off the charts in regards to this product here. It has over 26,000 searches every single month. And in regards to resume template, again, it has over 26,000 searches also per month. That means not only does the main category keyword resume have a lot of people coming to it, but just that micro niche of templates have a lot of people coming to it as well. So when I click on this, and then again, as he showed me all the different words that's coming up that people are typing in, and I see the search volume here as well, where I can target those micro niches. But if I just focus on resume template, you will see what I mean by the search volume has to be paired properly with the level of competition. I know this product has over 26,000 searches every single month, right? But if you look at the level of competition, what is it? We have only, you know, 31,000 listings coming up for this search result. So what does that tell me? That tells me, first of all, that there is a great ratio between the level of searches per month and the products that are coming up per month. There's not enough product to meet the demand, right? The 31,000 search results are typically what comes every single month because people are slowly creating products in this space. But there's always going to be 26,000 people searching per month for this product. That means I can create something that's targeting the individual needs and then bring that traffic over to my product. So again, the main thing I would go down here and say, okay, what products are doing well? Let me pull out maybe five to 10 best selling items. Again, those pop now I see the badges here for the poplars. Now the best selling badges, I would go here and click and see, okay, how many people have this item in the cart? And what I would do then is that I will extract all this information, what layout, what template style is doing well, what information is on the resume? How are they mocking up their resume template? What keywords are they using to actually drive traffic to their product? If I already know 26,000 people are coming for this product, how can I make my product different? Again, focus on those products that are doing well and bring all of the information to your new product you can create in this demanding space. So this type of research can also be done for print on demand products in regards to t-shirts, sweatshirts, and all things you sell online with print on demand. So in our case today, we still want to utilize our same strategy, but in our case today, we want to bring up math teacher shirt and see what things are coming up in regards to that. So one of the things I learned that you don't want to shy away from keywords or products that have low search volume because those things can be tied in with other relatable products as well. And you can even do some blending in regards to what products you are creating. So in our case today, for example, I want to focus on a math teacher shirt. This has about 400 plus search results per month. So when I click this, I want to check out the level of competition that is coming up. So again, I have almost 30,000 listings coming up for math teacher your shirt that's the level of competition so one of the things i can do here is that i can merge the math teacher shirt over with a type of season i want to sell in in our case today we are in the christmas season and so when i merge over this particular search phrase for this product math teacher shirt i can also see that there are some math teacher christmas shirts that are selling as well so again don't be afraid of low search volume and even high competition in regards to some of these words because i can narrow down my search even further to target that individual in regards to the christmas season so i would then go here and search up math teacher search christmas and as you can see here i know the search volume for christmas is high and I know the search volume for math teacher is pretty high as well. And so I know that whatever is going to show up here is going to target that individual who want a math teacher shirt for Christmas. And if you notice, our level of competition has went down as well. And again, this is what I mean by finding those micro niches, making sure that you are creating products that are proven to be in demand and even using this strategy 
of taking in a particular key phrase and merging it or blending it over to a particular season to actually attract that specific buyer. From here, I would do the same type of product research to figure out what products are doing well. Again, what can I learn from them? Not to copy, but to grab some things that are doing well and then create my own product I can sell on my Etsy shop. So as you can see, using Sales Summary is a great way for you to identify what products you need to create on your Etsy shop. This is a great way for you to skip the guessing game and actually focus on real data that would give you real results. And actually identifying how many people are searching up a product can save you so much time in regards to where you spend your time creating on your Etsy shop. Now, in today's video, I didn't have time to talk about how to use all this data to create a full Etsy listing with great titles and great tags. However, if you want to check out this next video here, make sure you click it to learn exactly how I do that. And if you want to learn more about how to create passive income online, make sure you subscribe to my channel here. As always, my friends, my name is Jay, and I will see you in the next video.